Hi, my name is Elliot Prechter, and I'm the lead developer on eWaves, which is the world's most advanced Elliott Wave analysis software. Now, the last video I did, I talked about EWI's flash services. So we're going to pop over to my.elliotwave.com. We'll look at some of the outstanding recommendations they have. And I kind of want to do a follow-up on our last video because the last video got a huge response. People were very, very interested in it uh, in terms of both uh, the market opinions we expressed in it and also how we used e-waves to find these setups in an automated fashion using the Wavefinder. So a lot of those recommendations we went over last week, as you can see, are no longer present. We had a huge number of long positions that we had recommended, and we exited many of those long positions. So if we go into our history tool here, we can see some of those long positions were TMO, uh, Hasbro, PODD, um, Apple. You know, these had moved up quite a lot since our initial entry at those very low points. So I decided, okay, even if the wave count isn't completely finished on a lot of these, it's time to go ahead and take these off the table from a trading point of view. You know, if, if, if we were forecasting, we might want to hold them longer. But as a trader, I was happy and wanted to go ahead and exit. Now, one of these I'd really like to talk about is Apple. Now, Apple is one of the Magnificent Seven stocks, so I believe it along with a few other key stocks are really controlling the market right now. Because as you know, the S&P would actually be flat on the year if it weren't for these seven magnificent stocks. So Apple is very interesting because I, I believe it is kind of bifurcating from the other stocks. It's much, much weaker now um, ever since we recommended exiting it. Um, let's go ahead and take a look at that so you can see what I'm talking about though. So let's first of all go into the E-Waves Live tool. Um, our entry here was 171 and our exit was 193. So that can clue us in uh, 171. We entered right around here. We exited 193, which is right around this area here. And I wanna talk about why we did what we did. So if you remember from the last video, the entry point, which was right here, we did this because we were looking for a correction. Here's a zigzag that was done, okay? In a wave four position which means wave five comes next. And they were also looking for, for a little bit of a break. We wanted a move in our favor, which we got this little pop here. And that was enough to break this baseline here, this two four line of C. That's not much of a move, but it's just enough to give us a little bit of confirmation that this trend from this point here down to here was likely over and allowed us to have a little bit of space here to put a stop here. And, and gave the market some room to have a retracement and then continue higher here. My current opinion is that this is likely peaked at this price, but because of the imperfections in the count, I would be hesitant to take any action at this particular time. We had recommended going long Apple at this low level because this correction was quite perfect. Very, very nice correction. We didn't have any major issues like we have with this motive wave going up here. Now, earlier I had mentioned about how Apple was diverging from the other Magnificent Seven stocks. And you can see this huge amount of weakness that we've had lately in Apple. This is quite a, quite a strong decline right here. Um, versus, say, Microsoft. If we go into our stocks tool, you'll see we still have our Microsoft recommendation active. We did not close that one out. And you can see why, because we had one, two, three, four... And we wanted to get that new high and we hadn't gotten it yet at the time. So we were still holding it on. And of course, going into E-Waves Live and looking at the wave count here and watching it evolve each day. And as you can see, we've moved higher up to 390, which I believe is a new high, 384. Yeah, so we got that new high. It's looking based on the structure of this that it would be nice to see it go a little bit higher before putting in that, that fifth wave and getting out. So we're, we're watching Microsoft like a hawk, but this is a divergence because we're going to new highs here, whereas of course Apple is not. So that's a big warning sign that, okay, the Magnificent Seven might be showing some signs of weakness. They're not agreeing with each other. And that could be a bearish sign for the broader market. In fact, if we go back to our positions here, you can see that on the queues, Although we do have a long position here, let me show you what wave count it is. Okay, this is the, the NASDAQ. Okay, we went long here. This is very similar to all the other setups that we've looked at. We were, in this case, we had a flat correction, A, B to a new high, C down 
to new low. This is an expanded flat that we popped up just a little bit. Now there's not enough structure to really see this clearly, but that's just enough of a move to break whatever internals might have been here. E-Waves only uses end of day data, so it's not able to really see these internals, but that was certainly enough. We got some overlap with A of the flat here, 1655 versus 1665. So when there's not a lot of internals here to really see, looking for that break of A here is a, is a good signal um, to go long in a, in a flat, just giving us that confirmation that the flat is complete. So um, we're long on the Qs here, and indeed what has happened is the Qs have moved higher from this point. Um, we can go ahead and pull them up here. We're almost at that new high now, but not quite just shy of it, but uh, the important thing to, is that this count here is very similar to the Microsoft count here in E-Wave Slide. One, two, three, four, one little bit move up. One, two, three, four, one little more move up, and then we're going to finish potentially a major peak here. Um, and again, we've got those divergences between the Magnificent Seven stocks, Apple and Microsoft, um, as well as what's going on in the queues and the sentiment, giving us kind of a, a, a nice picture here of what the uh, NASDAQ 100 is doing, which again, I think is the most important index now because it's dominated by the Magnificent Seven and that's what's holding the market up. You know, one interesting thing about this flat correction here, and I apologize, it's a little hard to see. I can zoom in the browser here a little bit, but flats have a very strong emotion, especially in C of the flat, where you have a very strong and fast move down and people tend to get short term, very bearish. Um, Obviously, the bigger picture, everybody's bullish out of their <laughs> bullish to the max. But very short term, we had a little little spike in fear here, and I think a lot of people thought the the top was in. But again, I looked at our wave structure and said, well, you know, even though this A could have been four and that could have been five and that could have been done, it really counts better here. It channels better four and two are more proportionate, and plus this was just a nice flat. So I really thought we should move a little bit higher to finish this out. And I think that's what we're seeing now. Another interesting thing about this structure that I wanted to mention is that wave three can't be the shortest wave. So since wave one is large and three is small, that means wave five has to be smaller than three. So this move is capped on the upside. There's a certain limit. I'd have to calculate it. Um, but basically it's, it's this distance here between this two and this four, or sorry, this two and this three. So what is that? 1686 to 15.7. Um, so that distance there, is the same distance that we can go from this four up. And if we go any further than that, it's gonna invalidate this wave count. So if we do go up and make that slight new high, we'll have an opportunity to recommend a position going inverse the NASDAQ um, with limited risk on the upside. And we won't have to wait for major breaks because we know that five is capped. This is a rare thing. You only get limits on five in these types of impulses where three is shorter than one, which I sometimes call a wedge. And you also get them in ending diagonals, but most impulses don't give you that kind of opportunity to have that kind of limited risk. So I think there could be some exciting things coming, but of course, there's no certainty in any of this. The wave counts can change at any time. Um, this could become a one, two, one, two, all kinds of things could, could happen. And that's why we use E-Waves Live and why we, we check it every day and why uh, you know we, we watch these wave counts as they unfold over time. Um, because the markets can change on a dime. The last market here that's worth addressing briefly, let's let's uh, shrink QQQs. Let's look at ASHR. Um, this is China, an ETF that covers China. We've been sh recommended going short this back in May. That was at 28, and now it's at 22. That is a, a very large move. Um, let's go in to eWaves Live, we can see what ADSHR looks like now. Hey, give that a second. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. So, you know, this has been a very large decline. Obviously, we're very happy with this, but as you can see, it's possible we are finishing up some kind of larger structure. So it's possible that we will, you know, close this out. But again, we are waiting for the wave count to evolve a little bit more uh, before doing that. And of course, if it does move higher and then uh, E-Waves would change its mind on this wave count, um, this is a really large extended fifth wave at this point. So uh, we're just having having to watch this market very, very carefully. Um, 
Of course, as I've said in the previous video, I'm not here to do super long-term forecasting. These are, you know, swing trade type of recommendations. Um, sometimes they last just a few weeks and sometimes they can last for months. It's kind of hard to know. You have to kind of watch the wave counts evolved, watch your sentiment indicators. Um, and, you know, we'll just be on alert for that next swing trade to the downside. And then, of course, after that, there'll be a swing trade to the upside because that's what the market does. It goes up, it goes down, it goes up, it goes down, it goes up and goes down <laughs> continuously. So, uh, but using this these uh, wave counts, we can really take a lot of the emotion off the table and a lot of the confusion off the table because sentiment alone doesn't always work. Sentiment alone would have told you that this here, uh, you know, was the final peak in the queues and that we wouldn't be moving up as sharply as we have been over this past week. But we were on, on high alert for that. Now, if indeed this was the top, then E-Waves would probably alert us to that. Probably by the time we break down below this four level here, you can kind of imagine a trend line here. Uh, and if we do break below that, then obviously the top would already be in. So uh, we'll be watching that. And that's the nice thing about E-Waves is that it gives you the most probable count, but it also changes its mind instantly if that count is not the correct count to orient you in the correct direction. So, you know, E-Waves doesn't have any emotions. It's just a machine, unlike a person, which sometimes will get stuck with an opinion. E-Waves won't. In fact, E-Waves is a memoryless system. And so every single day, the entire wave count is generated with no knowledge other than the raw data itself. You know, it doesn't remember what its own opinion was yesterday, which makes perfect sense when you think about it. You just want to look at, at the current entire picture and count it as best as possible. And that's how E-Waves changes its mind because it's look, getting, getting a fresh look every single time. So that's it for today. We're going to see what the markets do next. If you're interested in flash services, then you can check these out at elliotwave.com. Uh, again, they're partners with Qualitative Analytics, so they have access to E-Waves Live, and you get these E-Wave Live uh, charts here with each flash recommendation. However, you do not have the ability to zoom in and out, and these do not update. Uh, to do that, you would need the full E-Waves Live, where these update every single day, and you can zoom in and out to see the full picture, and of course, use the Wave Finder, which I covered in my last video, which is how I find the setups that we use to power flash. So if you want um, E-Waves Live or you're interested in E-Waves Live, for that, go to ewaves.com and go to the contact field and just send us a message here. So that's all for now. And I'll talk with you guys again when there's something new and interesting in the markets or in E-Waves to discuss.